Hi guys, uh, I'm going to show you how to create a stopwatch. Uh, it, it should be an interesting one. Uh, let's get into the code. Uh, before we code, uh, we need a text editor. So I recommend uh, Visual Studio Code, which you can find in uh, Google. Uh, okay, let's start. Just create a HTML file. Let's name it as uh, index.html. Okay. Uh, then followed by that, uh, we need an index.css and uh, index.js. We can include the JS and CSS after we have completed the skeleton of this HTML. Uh, let's put up uh, a basic skeleton before we start. So uh, you have to separate uh, the app, everything just by the division tag so that you can easily split up the each fun functionalities of the stopwatch. Uh, so you have to give it a name with an attribute ID uh, to, uniquely, to uniquely identify the every tags. In this uh, basic stopwatch, there is uh, three functionalities, uh, a start, a stop, and reset. Uh, everyone knows that uh, the start button just uh, start the timer, and then uh, we can stop that, and also we can reset that. Uh, so we have to create the th three more buttons, a stop, start, and reset. Then you have to create a do for the timer uh, when you start the button uh, uh, the timer will start running instantly in the timer there is a hours minutes seconds and milliseconds so that we can differentiate the timing uh, it will be approximately a good one to uh, set the milliseconds so that I have keep the timer uh, till the milliseconds. Okay, uh, let's follow up the screen. I'll show you uh, how to create and we'll execute in the Chrome. Okay. We can check our skeleton in the Chrome browser. After, after the code is saved, uh, just open up the index.html in the Chrome. Uh, just click the Ctrl plus O in the Chrome to open up the index.html file. Here you can find the start, stop, and reset button. Uh, then uh, after that, you have to start doing your functionalities in the index.js. We have to keep the code uh, very precisely. Uh, set the function name and the variables in a most readable format so that the every developer could follow our code. I'm going, going to show you uh, the way that I know. Uh, I used the set interval so that uh, a thousand milliseconds is equal to one second. So I used the set interval to uh, to run its function every instant for the one millisecond. So uh, we create a millisecond interval variable so that we can start and stop the set interval using that variable.
the milliseconds reaches the thousand uh, it should be reinitialized as one if it doesn't it should be incremented once again second should be uh, counted so you have to create an other set interval function to increment the seconds if the milliseconds reaches its 1000 like this you have to uh, create the, uh, for the milliseconds seconds uh, hours and minutes so that uh, the these the uh, run on its own uh, when the milliseconds reaches its 1000 milliseconds the second should incremented as one if the seconds reach its uh, 60 uh, it should be reinitialized and the minutes will be incremented and then uh, if the minutes will reach its 60 seconds and it will be reinitialized and the hours will be incremented so so that this is the way the stopwatch can run its own way so that uh, we can start the start timer by this kind of functionalities Okay, uh, now we finished our start timer function. Now we are moving to a stop function. Okay, here we ca you can use the clear interval uh, to stop the every function. Uh, once we already said the millisecond interval, seconds interval, minutes interval, and hours interval are there, we can use those uh, variables to clear those uh, four instantly running uh, intervals so that. Uh, we can stop the timer and we can start up whenever we can now uh, we are moving to the reset function it is uh, rather than uh, start timer and the stop timer we can just uh, initialize the hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds variable as zero so that uh, it will be reinitialized from the starting state as starting state so that uh, using re reset timer uh, we can reset our every functionality like before the start timer will newly uh, 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 start timer will newly start at its own when we start the timer from the button so uh, in reset timer uh, we should use the stop timer so that uh, the what is the uh, basic functionality of the reset is uh, when we click the reset uh, it just stop the timer once and then it will be reinitialized so that the app will be uh, getting into its starting state Now we are creating a, another function called set time to HTML. What does this mean? Uh, we are just uh, implementing the functions to create the data and generating the stopwatch timer data. So not even uh, this only to create the app. So we have to just uh, use those variables to set in HTML tags. We have forgotten one thing uh, we just created those functions but we did not call this when the button event is clicked so uh, we have to use the on click uh, attribute it is a, it is one of the event that every button has uh, so we use the on click event to start the timer and stop the timer and reset the timer so that uh, we can easily uh, call those functions in this on click event so that whenever a user 
uh, taps will start its function automatically. Yes, guys, everything is set up. Uh, just we should run this app in Chrome. Let's try. Okay, let's let, refresh that and start the button. Now it's nothing properly working. We have to check the console. There is an error. The start timer is not defined. Uh, then you have to check in the index.html. Sure. And there is the start timer. I guess it will be a spelling type of mistake. It will be a no, it's uh, it's right at the time. What's wrong? Let's refresh it and what again? Oh, it's the same error. Let's debug. Oh yes, uh, I forgot to include the index.js. Uh, we have to use that script tag to include the index.js. We have to specify the index.js where, where it is. In our case, uh, index.js is on the same directory, so we use the index.js. Now we start the button. Yes, it's working. It's working fine. Uh, now uh, we have to change our code as beautiful by using the CSS. Now we are entering into the CSS part. It will be more fun. That's nice. Uh, now uh, we are moving into our CSS section. There we can uh, create a new CSS. To beautify our app uh, so that it looks better in the browser so we have to create a tag link tag to include our CSS uh, oh, yes it's a href tag to include the CSS and there is a one more uh, one more property I missed out uh, just google it Now use those inspect element to beautify the tags. Just click on the tag and just modify the CSS in there itself. It is the develop developer console for the HTML and the CSS. Here you can define your own styles. So I am using the ID tag. As a preference or the div tag, we are now creating the width, adding on the background color for that whole uh, timer screen. I'll just speed up the video. Uh, just see it uh, how it, it will be done. Uh, the start, stop, and uh, reset button it looks uh, somewhat not. Uh, I'm not satisfied with that, so I'm using the font awesome icons. Uh, because uh, most of the people like to click the icons because uh, it will uh, interact with the users uh, more precisely so I am using the font uh, font some icons we can find it in the W3 schools itself uh, I am searching the better one to suit our app I am searching for the start stop reset button uh, it will be there uh, 
uh, just follow the screen guys I am going to speed up now Now our app is getting into its final stage. Uh, now we'll start the timer. It's doing great. It's running gradually. Now we are stopping that. And we can click the labs too. It will capture those times. And we can reset and we can start. Everything you can do. Uh, Guys, uh, if you find this video more useful, just click the subscribe button until we get back into the next video. Thank you guys. Cheers.